What's up everybody, it's Troy Kearns. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about why I am still buying properties in 2022, despite a potential crash that I know is coming. If you're brand new to my channel, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the like button and make sure that you get started taking action in this video today and write down some goals as you get through this. Let's get into why I am still buying properties despite the fact that I know the market is going to crash and this whole thing is going to implode, right? So first of all, as a guy who flips between 20 and 50 homes per year, every year, and have done so for a last several years, right? I'm always looking to create income. And if you understand something about a real estate crash, it's completely different than a stock market crash. So what I wanted to explain to you is that the sales cycle of real estate is slow. If you sell a stock right now, if you click the mouse, right, and you decide to execute that stock order, it's instantaneous. Maybe worst case scenario, you're gonna have to wait till the market open the next day and then that stock is gone. When you sell real estate, you've got to put it on the market and you have to find someone to buy it, right? And then depending on if they find nothing wrong with it, there's no repairs, there's no appraisals, and they're paying cash, then it may close in 30 days, right? If not, you may be on the market for 60 days before you get an offer, 90 days before you get an offer, 120 days before you get an offer, and then it's gonna take between 30 and 60 days after you get that offer to close. Sometimes the real estate sales cycle can take like six months. That's why I am still buying real estate in 2022 because I do not focus on buying properties to lose money. I focus on buying properties to make money, right? If you're focused on the fact that the crash is coming, then you're focused on not buying properties. I know that there's a crash is coming, right? It's just like watching the freeway. If you're seeing there's a crash coming down the road, you're gonna pay attention to what's on both sides of you, right? You're gonna see what's coming up next. But like I said, the cool thing about real estate and knowing that the sales cycle is super slow, the stock market is instantaneous, right? The minute you decide to sell that stock, it's sold. If I put my house in the market, now we're gonna find out like, okay, this house is going to sell and then that's going to be the comp, right? And then if another person sells, that's going to be the next comp. What's a comp? That's your history of sold properties. That's what you're comparing your property's value to, right? So having watched this before in 2008 through 2012, so the peak of the market was 2006, seven, eight-ish, depending on what market, and the bottom across all markets was 2012, right? And then we're right where we're at again in 2022, right? But what happens is the reason it took four years to hit the bottom and the stock market took like four days to hit the bottom is because of the sales cycle of real estate. So if you understand that, then you understand that even though there's an impending crash that's coming, you have time to exit the market. That's my whole point. As a real estate investor, as a wholesaler, as a flipper, as somebody who invests in real estate, you need to understand market timing, right? You need to understand how fast things sell and how quickly you can get out of a deal, right? Now, I will tell you that my buy and hold strategy has tremendously changed, right? So that is one thing. So I'm still flipping in 2022 because I know that, hey, I can get out of the property. In fact, I'm making more money flipping houses in 2022, despite of many mistakes because the market has been at my back. And if we know, if you know about that as a real estate investor, it's a great thing, right? You can make mistakes sometimes and then get paid for them because the market's gone up, right? And in, in this case, in 2022, that's exactly what's happened. Everything's gone up in value because of scarcity, because of supply, because of demand, because of COVID, because of whatever, everything's gone up in value. And so sometimes the delayed market timing has actually played to my advantage, right? That's fantastic for flipping houses but when it comes to buying houses for long-term investment strategies, am I still doing that? And the answer is absolutely, but I'm deciding what I'm going to buy, right? I'm not buying a ton of single family houses this year. In fact, I'm not buying many houses this year at all to hold, right? I'm buying most of my houses to flip, but I am buying commercial properties because commercial properties are not impacted by the market conditions as much as residential properties are. Because commercial properties derive their value from their cap rate and market conditions, not just from market conditions. So if the market's good, commercial properties will sell at higher cap rates, but if they're vacant, they're still gonna sell for you know the same thing. The market conditions might improve, but not as much. So if you're investing in real estate, 
You can still buy buy and holds. You can still buy commercial properties. You can still buy residential properties in a market that you know might be crashing because you are focused on buying a value. And who cares if the property goes down in value if you're making X number of dollars per month in cash flow as an investment, right? You're not buying properties for the fact that they go up in value. You're buying properties that cash flow as a real estate investor. And as a wholesaler and flipper, you're buying properties that are gonna be in a short market cycle, right? You don't need to worry about market timing because you're moving quickly on the property, right? As a long-term real estate investor, you shouldn't be thinking about market timing because your buy and hold strategy should already be determined before you acquire the property. So that's why I'm still buying properties in 2022 is because I can predict the market, right? And I know always as a flipper, as somebody who flips properties that, guess what? I'm looking six months out always, worst case scenario. Generally speaking, if we're dealing with a minor renovation, we might have that property on the market back within 30 days. But if we're dealing with a major renovation, it might take a month, it might take two months, it might take three months, it might take a year to renovate some properties. Some of these properties take a long time to fix up, and the longer they take to fix up, the more the market can shift, right? So you gotta be careful when you're looking outward that you don't take on properties that take too long to fix that you don't know what you're getting into unless they cash flow of course so you can hold them as a long-term investment so the bottom line is if you haven't subscribed please make sure you take a time to do that right now so you can bring you more information comment below if you believe that the market is crashing or you believe the market will continue to grow right and i want to know what you think obviously you heard my opinion right now but do not let that deter you from investing in real estate again I want to clarify, you have time to exit the market in real estate. It's not a stock. The sales cycle is not instantaneous. So make sure you get started in real estate investing, stay out of the stock market, and keep your nose clean. Peace.